Welcome. Thank you. I have to say that is absolutely fascinating. You work, as we learned, with nanotechnology, infinitely small devices to solve major problems like depression, cancer, aging. <laughs> it's been said that your work can even slow down and present Alzheimer's disease, which is unbelievable. So first, let's start with this. How small are these devices? <laughs> So very, very small, in the range of few nanometers to few microns. So if you take a strand of your hair and divide the thickness 100,000 times, each thickness would be that, you know, a nanometer. So that's the scale of our devices. Amazing. And so tell us a little bit about, for example, Alzheimer's. How, uh, how does it work? Okay. So first of all, um, I should say here that currently there is no cure for Alzheimer's disease. And there is no cure for most of the brain diseases today, even today. Mm -hmm. So if we focus on just the Alzheimer's disease, um, so current technologies fail to cure this disease. As, and one of the major reasons is that because of lack of early stage intervention. Mm -hmm. So current technologies can only intervene after cognitive decline happens, mm. and that is already too late, because after that, what happens is that irreversible neuronal change and damage happens, and there is no way to reverse back. Mm. So what has been shown is that at early stages of Alzheimer's disease, there are very small regions in the brain, which are located deep inside the brain, where the pathology is confined. And it's not just one small region, there are multiple of those regions. However, currently, none of the technologies can stimulate those specific small regions in the brain. Mm. This is because we have, of course, the invasive electrodes. Each of these electrodes is a centimeter scale probe. You have to create a hole in the skull and put that probe in. Wow. So clini clinically, you can put just one or two of them. Mm. So you cannot put multiple of those because it will destroy the whole brain. It would be like an acupuncture of the brain, so it's not possible. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah, not good at all. It's not even possible. And also there are non-invasive technologies like transcranial magnetic stimulation or transcranial direct current stimulation or sensory stimulation. But those stimulation regimes cannot reach deep inside the brain. So again, uh, uh, there is currently no technology which can stimulate multiple regions deep in the brain simultaneously. So that is where you know, the technology we have developed comes in. So these are formed of wireless, free-floating, non uh, like nano-electronic devices, very, very small, much smaller than the size of a single cell. They can, for the first time, stimulate multiple small regions in the brain, uh, which are situated in the deep brain regions. And with such stimulate, uh, stimulation at the early stages of the Alzheimer's, what you can do is you can prevent the spread of the disease mm -hmm. to other regions of the brain. So you can prevent this pathological size from spreading, and you can prevent this pathology from growing into a full-blown Alzheimer's disease. Well, that's a, obviously an unbelievable breakthrough. I can't probably uh, properly state how unbelievable that is. And in terms of the impact on women, we know that women are two-thirds of Alzheimer's patients, uh, and so yeah. that's unbelievable. Even women, controlled for age, even controlled women for age. Women have actually, uh, are at the to at twice the risk of mm. uh, getting Alzheimer's compared wow. to men. And that's actually true for uh, most brain diseases and diseases of aging. So our, right now, about a billion people around the world you know, have uh, brain diseases which cannot be cured. So two-thirds of them are women, so two-thirds of a billion uh, people. My gosh. <laughs> staggering, truly staggering. So you, you mentioned aging, um, and it's also been said that your work may actually reverse the process of aging. How is that possible? How does it work? Uh, and what's the science behind this? So in diseases of aging, what happens is uh, that the regular electrical functioning of the cells uh, get dysregulated. Mm -hmm. And what we are doing with our nanoelectronic devices is basically modulating this electrical activity of the cells with high spatiotemporal resolution and you are able to reinstate them to their original normal state. And by addressing the root cause of the disease at a very biomolecular and electrical, electrical level, you are able to modify the course of the disease itself, going beyond the symptomatic benefits. Actually, that can help to reverse the course of the disease of aging and reverse the aging itself down the line. 
I just want you all to recognize that we're actually witnessing history here. This is something really unbelievable, and it's almost impossible to be on this stage uh, and not feel just in awe uh, of what you're doing. When was there, or was there, a light bulb moment for you that you realized that you could use nanotechnology in this way? So my background is actually in nanoelectronics and applied physics, and I had developed uh, very low-power energy-efficient nanoelectronic devices. And while working on uh, energy-efficient electronic devices, I realized that brain is the lowest power computer ever. So I did a very steep transition from the field of applied physics to the field of neuroscience and biology. And then having observed both these fields very closely, I realized the gap that is there in the field of bioelectronics. I realized the electronics component in the field of bioelectronics is still very archaic. Mm. And I realized that I could bring in my expertise in cutting edge nanoelectronic devices into the field of biology. So, uh, you know, the amazing thing about nanoelectronics is that they can be built from scratch and according to an engineer's dream, and it can incorporate functionalities which are beyond the capabilities of biology. And you can harness this versatility of nanoelectronics into biological uh, systems to actually cure diseases which currently are completely untreatable with existing technologies. You mentioned an engineer's dream, and I, I assume, and I would guess, that there's probably no better place to do this in the world than the MIT Media Lab. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, the idea that you would combine those two seemingly disparate fields. Exactly, uh, and uh, yeah, it's an interesting story I would share, that when I was interviewing for faculty, uh, positions, it was, uh, I interviewed in both electrical engineering departments and there would be bioengineering departments. Mm -hmm. So for the electrical engineering departments, I was too much into biology. <laughs> and for the, you know, bioengineering department, I would be, you know, too much of uh, electrical engineering. So I was kind of a misfit. But, mm -hmm. you know, Media Lab is the one which would really allow us to do transdisciplinary research in its true sense. It feels like this is a moment in time with this technology and AI revolution that there's probably never been a more important place than yeah, the MIT exactly. Media Lab. That's allowing you to combine these disciplines that people otherwise usually look at as siloed. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's kind of incredible. So what does this uh, mean for you uh, in terms of the way you look at the future of your work? And, and what does it mean for women? So um, one thing I should also mention is our work in the field of cancer. Mm. Um, uh, so there are uh, some types of cancer uh, which even today have no cure, mm. and one of them is specifically uh, relevant to women. Uh, so we know that breast cancer, you know, is uh, pervasive, and so breast cancer, the one good thing is that it's still completely curable. However, when the metastasis of the breast cancer happens to the brain, mm. that becomes incurable. And uh, the sad story is that 30 to 50% of the women carry the risk that their breast cancer can uh, metastasize to the brain. Wow. And once that happens, the, brain ca uh, the breast cancer brain metastasis has no cure. Surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, immunotherapy does not work. So in, in uh, this regard, the work we had been doing is developing a novel bioelectronic therapy for cancer. Mm. And we have shown, our results show that our bioelectronic therapy can actually kill cancer cells which are resistant to drugs or radiation. So we are very excited um, about this because this can have huge implications for women's health. That's incredible. Incredible. So uh, again, I tell you that to be here at the MIT Media Lab, with these women scientists is really life-changing for me, and it's going to be life-changing for millions of people. Um, I can't thank you enough for your work. We look forward to following all that's to come, and uh, please let us all know how we can be supportive of the work going forward.